Hello everyone and welcome to the official Scriptcase channel. My name is Jamie and I am also the creator of the new channel Scriptcase by Jamie where you can find out more about Scriptcase. So in today's training we will be learning how to use the Mandrill API with our Scriptcase development environment. Now this type of platform is ideal for those people who want to send mass emails or even transactional emails, which are the type of emails you send to your customers once they have purchased something or anything to do with billing, registration and other on your website. Using the Mandrill API, we can create a project that will provide access to the provided services which are available in Mandrill, which is of course email sending. Now, this will be a complete project that you will be able to use, modify, learn from and do whatever you please with. So let's take a look at the platform once it has been completed. So we have a login interface where we can log in and the username and password for this is admin admin. So nothing complicated, making sure you can all get in there and not setting some fancy username and password that well, you are never gonna figure out. Okay, so admin admin and you can log in. And then once you are logged in on the dashboard here, we see some information regarding our sending of emails within the platform, or should I say Mandrill. We have some events on the side here for the opening and closing rates and so forth. We have a list of persons of all the people that we have within our personal platform to which we send emails to. And we have some events here that we can see. For instance, we have here an event that was sent to this user here, and we can see the email icon, the type of status, and so forth. So there is a lot of information in this, and of course, more information will be added as, well, you develop it. So you have a list of emails as well. So there's a couple there. We have our templates, which we synchronize with MailChimp, as well as registration, configuration information so that we can manage our departments, our webhook, as well as view here webhook events. And of course, that is something that we then want to see. So what happens with this platform is you are able to synchronize, first of all, your email templates. And then within your persons list, well, you can choose multiple users and basically send them an email. And then with that, you can then also load templates from the template system. And you see, I still have debug mode in here. And that is then loading the template from Mandrill. And then we can send that to our users. Now, this provides a few advantages other than just the transactional email sending as well as on purchase and so forth, but that you are then able to use the HTML editor available within MailChimp because Mandrill was purchased by MailChimp. So they are both integrated together. So the platform may be a little difficult to navigate, but in general, you will be able to access Mandrill and you will ideally need to have a paid account. Now, I have set up a demo sample account so that we can run through this training and I can show you the setup of that as well as how then we create the platform so that we can use it. Once you get this online and I'll show you how to, then the platform will of course be working beautifully. And some of those features we will see because some of the functionality works even during the development phase. Okay, so within this platform, we also have all of our security. So we have a typical application security or user security, should I say, for this project. And as you see, that was then generated via the script case features. Now, other applications we have here, for instance, the webhooks. Now, the webhook, as I said, for this to work, the platform will be needed to be online. And that will then gather or collect 
all of the occurrences of your email sending. So when we see here the events here, we would then see the events for the specific webhook that has occurred. And then we can see what happened with that email. And we can see here that it was opened. And then we can see also that their emails were sent or that they have been delivered and so forth according to the events that are available within Mandrill. And of course, all of that is all set up within this project already. So all you need to do is apply your changes, make your adjustments and make the platform yours. Or of course, copy it and replicate it and make it something else. Okay, so let's have a look a bit further. First of all, let's jump into here MailChimp. Now, MailChimp owns Mandrill, okay? So that is important to note. And I am going to admit, I have not found the way to view Mandrill here within MailChimp. I've looked for all the pages. I must be missing it somewhere. But if you enter mandrillapp.com, it will ask you to log in via MailChimp. And then if you're logged in already, well, then you will be able to access here the Mandrill application. Now, MailChimp allows us to create templates. And once you have a full account, these templates will also be synced over here to Mandrill. So that is something I am missing. I am stuck here with the basic templates that Mandrill allows us to create. But that is something we'll have a look at in a moment. So within Mandrill, we have here, first of all, some email information. So we can send emails via our Scriptcase project that we develop and send emails via Mandrill. It is important that you have your sending domain set up. And here you can see that I had set up my domain here, verified it as well as all of the settings, and of course, tested that. Now, that can take 24, 48 hours sometime to propagate because again, this is all down to DNS and basically the identification of your domain. And that can take some time sometimes. So once it has been added here and you have that set up, you have then, again, as I said, your SMTP settings there. You can use those within your project. And then you have your sending defaults that you can configure, your rejection lists that you can set up. You have API logs in here as well. And as you see, we have some logs in here of the API calls. Okay, so this is all yesterday. And this was me then developing the initial platform, which, of course, I showed you a few moments ago. And we will be developing today. Now, once you have your platform set up, you will be able to check this and make sure your application is working nicely. You will also have the possibility of adding a webhook. Now, to add a webhook, we simply need to choose all of the events for which we want this webhook to send and receive or send information, should I say. And then here we would then add our URL. So in my case, this would have been HTTPS and then script case by jamie.com forward slash sc underscore test forward slash and then the application was webhook blank forward slash index dot php now that would then be my url now because my platform is not online or should I say it is online, but it is not working because of the PHP version 7.4. It is giving me some errors as soon as I log in. This page, of course, is not being identified here by the Mandrill system. So it is important that that URL that you add for the webhook, which we will set up shortly, you will need to have this accessible. OK, it is very important. It is also important that your domain has HTTPS as it should do today. And if not, then, of course, you may have some difficulty using some of the features. OK, so once you've done that, you will have here within Mandrill your outbound. And as you can see here, we have then our email sent, in, sent and received. And we have some here rejected. And we can see that here beautifully, the opens and the clicks and so forth. And then we have that data then available in here. So these are a few tests that I was doing yesterday. And of course, we'll probably do a few more today during the recording. OK, so once you've done that within Mandrill, we also have our templates. Now, these are the templates that we will be synchronizing. And if I open up these, we can then add in here our 
HTML content for our HTML templates. Now, as I said, you do have templates here within the MailChimp and I thought that they were meant to synchronize over, but that feature doesn't seem to be available to me on the free account. So I'm having to use this as it is. And of course we could just add some HTML content in there or send a text email, however you like. And that could then of course be our sending emails. So what I will do while I'm here is I will go ahead and create one more template, new template, I will call it, I'll start coding. And then from here, I can add a label. I'll call it sample. I can add the from address. And I'll say help at scriptcase by jamie.com. And from Jamie. And I have a subject here new template sample. And then I can add in here my HTML content. So I can say h1, for instance. This is my title for the email. And of course, then one thing that we can also do here, here is add variables. And we need to add those with those hard brackets and then stars inside. So here I can say name, and that would then also be transferable over to our template. And then we can always see where to add our name in there. So if I said title, name, hello, welcome, just as a, a very basic, email here and let's add that into a p tag as well and there we go we have a very basic email available there and of course we will be importing that into our project or synchronizing that should i say and uh, which will then allow us to use that within our platform okay so just like that we have created here a template and that works that will work quite nicely then and we will see that then also within our project shortly Okay, so just a quick recap there. It is important that you have your project available online. You have here also an API key generated because you will be needing this. So if you don't have one, you can create a new API key there and you can specify that it only works for certain IP addresses, only certain calls, or that it is a test key. So I can create a test key in here. And this one here is actually my live key. So I'll create the test key. And there I am then presented now my test key. So I'll copy that. And then what I will do then is place that then also into my database. Okay, and once you have copied that, you can then use that. And of course, in this case, that is just a test key that I've created. And then here is then the live key. Now, one thing I would like to point out here, because I find it quite important that right now, when you are logged in, you are using the live platform of Mandrill. You are using the actual services. So if I send emails via this original API key and so forth, I will be applying those emails to my feature limit that I have within Mandrill. And because I'm using a free account, I am only able to send 25 emails. So it is definitely good to set up a test API key and then come up here to your name and then turn on test mode. And that will then activate test mode within your application or within the Mandrill um, platform. And then you can actually also go ahead and test all of those settings. Make sure you have your API key and your sending domain set up. You can check then also the API logs, the web hooks that you can then set up as well, of course. And then, of course, you are going to view all of your data for the activity and so forth for your test okay so you see straight away that is slightly different already from the live mode and if i exit the test mode and come here to the outbound i have some data there already because yesterday i used the live version instead of the test version but i'm very sure in many cases you would prefer to use the test version so please do so Okay, so now that we have seen that here within Mandrill, as well as MailChimp, I want to point out one more page, and that is, of course, the API reference for MailChimp. As we will be working with templates, so if you check here, the templates API, and then you can view all of the information, as well as the parameters that are provided for you via this API. 
And of course, those you will need to know, you have here also information for the webhook and so forth, and all of that is available to you. Now, do note that script case provides you some amazing macros, have, saving you the time from creating this entire script here. So we can do this six lines in two lines, and that is, of course, makes it a little easier for us. But I will be going through that within this training and showing you how and explaining also the code that we have there. So without further ado, let us dive into our environment. And what I'll do then is I will go ahead and close the project and, of course, create a new one. And so what I'll start then is create a new project and let's call this the Mandrill API app. And just like that, I have a nice new name for it. I can apply an image to this. So let me come here then to the image manager. And here, let's just search for something that is related to email. And there we have again, the red icon, which I used for the previous one. This time I will use a different one. And there we then have an image. Of course, if you choose a nice image, it will be displayed very nicely. I think this is just a, a bad quality image there and possibly smaller than what I need it for this. But at the same time, this icon is only for display within your development environment. OK, so it doesn't really matter. So I'll click next and start to create our project. Now, the first thing I need to do is actually connect here to my database. So you will need to fill in your host name, your username, your password, possibly change the driver as well as the port. And then when you're ready, click on list database, or you can test the connection first. And of course, right now I have no database selected, but I do want to then select here the SC Mandrill database that I have. I can test the connection again. And as we see, we have a successful connection, meaning we can continue with our development. So let's continue and click the next button. We have then the possibility of adding multiple languages into this project. So right now I am going to leave it as English only, but we will be adding multiple languages. OK, next. Now we choose our theme. Now for a change, I am just going to Stay here with the blueberry today. I could choose a different theme and even add multiple themes if I wanted to. But today we'll stay here with the blueberry. Click on create and we have then already the start of our project. So our project has now pretty much been created and is ready for us to start developing. OK, so what we will do then is I'm going to go ahead and close here the new application. And what I want to do is first of all, come here to the default values. And then here within the default values, I want to make some changes. So I'm going to change here the logo, first of all. And what will happen then is everything I change here now will then be applied to all applications. OK, so that will save us some time as we continue developing this project. So I will change the records per page to 25. The majority of other options here I will leave. I'll change the sweet alert to the bottom right. Uh, again, leaving the majority of options there. I'll come here to grid and I'll change the width to 100% and increase the tab group to 12 pixels and adjust here the records per page because we have a minimum of 25 records. So we'll start with 25 records, 50, 100, and then say 200. OK, so that will organize that a little nicer for us. And I will also choose here some different icons for our alphanumeric and numeric fields. And that will possibly make our application look a little nicer and easier to use for our users. OK, so one thing I could also do here is apply a different header. And I think I'm actually happy with them all having the flat. So we, we will actually leave that for the form. We have here a table width of 60% and I will change that to 100 also. And then from there, I will then just go ahead and adjust here my toolbar button so that they're all displayed on the right hand side and not in the center for the main toolbar. And then we can check that here also for the grid. 
and make any other adjustments here that we may want. And then there, what I would do is move the search up here to the left side so that it is actually next to here, the quick search. And that then maybe makes a little more difference. I will add an extra divider in there and remove this one there. Okay, so like that, I just click update and that will make some global changes to all of the applications that we now create. So if I create a form, it will ensure that everything I have set in here will be applied to all applications. And this will of course save us a great deal of time as we continue on throughout the project. Now we have other applications here we could configure as well. I will leave those, but what I do want to do is apply an internal library to all of my applications. Now this internal library may not be used by all applications, but just in case I'm going to add it so that it is available. And that is here the ERDB. So I have added that, I will click update. And now that library will be available for access within all of the applications. Okay, so if I close that then, we are then ready to start creating our applications. But before we do that, before we create our apps, let's add our multiple languages. So the first thing I need to do is come here to data dictionary and then add here a dictionary name. I can associate it with the database table, which I will do. And of course, with the connection as well. And that way, whenever we use this connection for this project, it will always have these language variables. Okay, so there we then have all of our tables and views. And we will have a look at our tables in a few moments before we finish up with this first part of the video. Okay, so before we get there, I am going to add all of these tables to the data dictionary. And just like that then, they will all be added. If you get an error message here, we can view it and pass it on to script case. It is good to do that those errors then get resolved. But in the majority of cases, you'll find it will not harm your project. Otherwise, you will know straight away. Okay, so I will select all of the applications. And in this case, well, we have no applications created. We have no need to synchronize. We have already synchronized with the dictionary. All tables are green and up to date. So we can actually go ahead and close this now. And our data dictionary is ready. And to just double check that, we can check here our application language. And there now we can see all of our tables with our fields that we have within our project. Okay, so I will go ahead and close that. And before we start to develop our applications, let's have a quick look at the database so that we know what we are developing with. So we have here our database tables available and we do have the views missing from here. So I do apologize for that, but they are available then within the actual database. And if I actually synchronize this now, the tables would then hit be displayed here. But in this case, I don't think we need the views are uh, just connecting to the various tables that we have available here and then displaying related data. Okay, so that's what the views are for. And we will, of course, be creating a few of those as we develop our project. Now, within our database, we have a few important tables here because our information, of course, is managed also by Mandrill. We will be sending emails. We have events that we need to manage. We have the webhook as well. And we want to capture all of that and make sure that we have also all the data within Mandrill, but also within our platform. So we have a table here for our departments and you may have noticed that within Mandrill there is a field there for departments and that then organizes the templates. So we have then of course our template table where we then synchronize the database from Mandrill with our database. And then essentially all those templates that we create in Mandrill or within our project or platform should I say, well they will be synchronized between each other which is quite sweet. We have a load of selects here within this table. So don't really need to pay much attention to that, but that is all the codes that we have. So maybe you do need to pay attention to that. 
But then we also have here the email status, so all of the statuses of our emails. And we have here the icons that we had seen previously, as well as the mandrel status and actual status, or our status. We have then the email table, where we then have a list of all of our email records that have been sent. We have a list of all of the events or a table for those events so that we can capture those events that happen during each of those stages of email sending. We then have here our persons table as well as the email address. And of course, you can adjust any of these tables as you need to, adding additional fields, changing the field names maybe. Of course, you may need to adjust the scripts just like I have done, but that is all that is then required. Then you have here the webhook table, and there we are then capturing all of the webhooks that occur and tracking those within our project. Now, you have here a configuration table, which is where we then have our API key stored, and of course, our security tables, where we have then our security settings, as well as then the security user accounts. Okay, so now that we've checked out the database tables and we have our project ready to go, let's go ahead and start to create those applications. So to do that, I will start up here with, first of all, the batch applications. And within the batch applications, I will first of all create here, well, choose, should I say, a few of these tables to generate applications on. So the first one I want here is email status. And as you see, by choosing one of these and using this express creation, we are presented with the option of creating a form and a grid at the same time. Now, it is important to note that both of these applications are linked or joined together. So viewing a grid, you will have a button and links to the form. The form has links back to the grid. Okay. Now, if you generate just the grid, it will have no form and no links. And the same applies if you only create a form. And in this case, that is exactly what we are doing, only creating a form. Okay, so then we have here our events, and there I want to have a grid of those events. We have then also here the persons, and for persons we have a form as well as a grid. And then we have here a template. And for the template, we want the form and the grid. And then for the webhook, we also want the form and the grid. Now for these other applications here, we do want these as well, but these would just be grids because these will essentially just be our views that we have created. So these are gathering data from these other tables and representing that in a separate view, which we can then create this grid on. So with that, I will click next. And of course, we can just go ahead and generate the source code, click to edit and finish. And that will then go ahead and generate all of our applications within Scriptcase. Now do note that I am running the latest version, so 9.9.015, which was just launched this morning. And of course that is working beautifully. Okay, so all of our applications are ready to go. And of course we can then start to develop this project. And just like that, super speedy, we have all of our applications ready. And as we can see here in home, they have all been generated, updated, and are available for us to start editing. Okay, so before we finish up, I'm just gonna go ahead and close all of these applications. We will come back to some of those in a moment, and of course, modify them and add some of the features and functionalities, and some of it, well, yes, I will be speeding the videos up, but all of that will be happening in the next video. So keep watching and come back in the next video where we will continue with the next part of this training where we start to develop this project. So thank you very much for watching and until the next video.